last ecg video we have understood about the p wave and qrs wave p wave for atrial depolarization and qrs wave for ventricular depolarization today the topic of discussion will be the p wave u wave and other waves like osborn wave epsilon wave and delta wave we'll understand the physiology of the each wave and how it helps in the diagnosis that will be the topic of discussion today so today we are starting with the t wave before we start the t wave uh, normal and abnormal we should know what is the physiology of the t wave okay so t wave is created by repolarization of the ventricle okay so it's a repolarization of the ventricle which gives you the t wave any problem with the repolarization will have abnormality with the t wave okay so this is the one concept you should remember the repolarization of the ventricle creates the t wave okay so t wave we are going to discuss first what is normal t wave then what is abnormal t wave okay so first let's understand what is normal t wave okay so now normal t wave is generally upright in the all the leads except lead avr and lead v1 okay except this leads you will get the upright t wave so in lead avr and v1 the inverted t is a normal phenomenon correct so that's the one point to remember second point about the t wave the t wave amplitude the t wave amplitude in the limb blade should be less than 5 mm okay so less than 5 mm amplitude in the limb blade okay now you know what is the what are the limb blades lead 1 2 3 avr avl and avf okay now the amplitude of the t wave in the chest plate should be less than 15 mm so we know what are the chest plate v1 to v6 okay so now we understood the normal morphology of the t wave here is one of the example of normal morphology of t wave this is the p wave this is the qrs complex this is the t wave okay so t wave should be upright except lead v1 and avr where it can be inverted normally t wave amplitude should be less than 5 mm in the limb blade and t wave amplitude should be less than 15 mm in the chest tube so this is about your normal t wave now let's understand the abnormal t wave so abnormal t waves we have many variants the first we'll start with the tall t okay so tall t is the first variant we are going to start so how to tell the t wave is tall okay so we have understood already what is the normal t wave amplitude correct so if t wave amplitude in limb blade is more than 5 mm or in the chest plate more than 15 mm it tells it's a tall t wave okay to make it more specific definition tall t wave is defined by the amplitude of t wave more than half of the preceding qrs complex okay so preceding qrs complex you have to calculate what is the amplitude of that more than half if t wave is occupying as amplitude it's a tall t wave okay now tall t wave can be seen in the condition like hyperkalemia ischemia mostly the hyperacute mi it's a first presentation with a tall t and sometimes even a normal variant okay now how to differentiate this whether it's a hyperkalemia ischemia and normal variant first is the common sense correct a patient who has risk factor for the hyperkalemia more likely to have hyperkalemic changes on the ecg a patient who comes to you with the sudden onset chest pain who is more likely to have mi or ischemia they are more likely to have ischemic t wave fine and if it's an incidental finding sometime it can be a normal variant now you want to be specific on the ecg how to differentiate it so let's understand one by one first we understand the hyperkalemia in hyperkalemia the tall t wave will be narrow based symmetrical and pointed okay so narrow based symmetrical and pointed is the hyperkalemic tall t okay in ischemia you have the broad base and pointed and symmetrical okay so broad base but it will won't be as pointed as in the hyperkalemia so broad base little pointed and symmetrical is the ischemic hyperacute mi okay or hyperacute t wave normal variant you will find broad base not pointed or smooth curve will be there like we can see it's a smooth curve here and it will be asymmetrical fine so the these are the variants of the tall t wave which are seen in hyperkalemia narrow based symmetrical pointed ischemic broad base symmetrical and little pointed normal variant non pointed broad base and asymmetrical so this is about the tall t wave next we are going to understand this inverted t wave we have seen in the normal definition t wave can be inverted in lead v1 and lead avr this will be the 
morphology of a normal t wave uh, inversion the normal uh, t wave inversion of the same morphology also can be seen in the case of the hypokalemia but here the t inversion will be seen in almost all the leads okay so this is the non ischemic t wave inversion if you see the ischemic t inversion the t inversion will be the pointed symmetrical and at least more than 3 mm okay so more than 3 mm pointed and symmetrical t wave inversion tells it's a ischemic inversion of the t wave we have understood about the tall t and inverted t now next we'll go for the two more abnormalities of the t wave that is biphasic t wave and flattened t wave before going to understand that let's revise what is normal t wave okay so normal t wave negative in avr and v1 in all other leads it's a positive the amplitude in the limb leads less than 5 mm in the chest leads less than 15 mm and this is the example of the normal t wave we are seeing here fine now let's understand the next topic biphasic t wave okay so biphasic t wave here you can see it's a one positive and negative deflection that's a biphasic so if the positive deflection comes first followed by the negative deflection it suggests the ischemia fine so ischemic biphasic t wave will have initial positive deflection followed by the negative deflection now if the case is reverse the negative deflection is first followed by the positive deflection it is seen in the case of the hypokalemia fine so negative deflection first positive deflection follows that it's a hypokalemia so this is about your biphasic t wave abnormalities now let's understand the flattened t wave flattened t wave means the t wave which is normally upright that the t wave becomes flattened okay so that is the flattened t wave now flattened t wave can be seen in two cases again okay here you can see the this is the p wave qrs and t wave here you can see it's almost a flattened t wave fine so this is about flattened t wave flattened t waves are seen in the case of ischemia and hypokalemia how to differentiate whether it's ischemia or hypokalemia now we understand ischemia is the process due to vascular problem so the flattened t wave of ischemia will be there in the contagious leads what you mean by contagious leads okay so like suppose if we take the inferior territory the 2 3 avf are the contagious leads for the inferior territory if we take a lateral territory so v5 v6 lead 1 and avl will be the lateral territory so if the t wave flattening is there in the contagious leads or the localized leads it's a ischemic event okay while if the t wave in flattening is seen in almost all the leads it can be due to a metabolic process like hypokalemia so t wave flattening is there in most all the leads it suggests the hypokalemia so now we understood about the what is normal t wave and what is the abnormal t wave like tall t wave first second we understood inverted t wave third we understood biphasic t wave then the flattened t wave so we understood about the t waves and the etiology for the same now next topic we are going to discuss is about the u waves if you are learning something from our videos subscribe to our channel and like our videos you can suggest something in the comment we'll try to improve further thank you